Hi, welcome to, to today's Lunch and Learn. Today's presenter is our very own Todd Weller on part two of converting spreadsheets into a FileMaker database. Please comment or ask a question to be entered into a raffle for a restaurant gift card. And also, please note that this is being recorded. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Todd. All right, thank you, Bobby. So uh, we had started uh, last time we were all together, and that was to take a, an Excel spreadsheet that we were using to manage uh, trade shows and then convert that into a relational database. And the tool that we had chosen to use is the FileMaker platform. And so you can see here's a you know, quick example of you know, the, the data. We've got our trade shows here that are listed. Uh, we also have a whole list of the exhibitors at each of these trade shows. And what we had worked at you know, last time was just converting the main trade shows and getting that into um, our system. Uh, but you know, to take full power, we want to look at this idea of this relational uh, data. Uh, now, luckily for us, uh, what you'll see here is that with the trade shows, each one has a specific ID number. And then over here on our exhibitors tab, uh, all of them are also referred to as, you know, with the, that ID number. And we're gonna be able to use that to establish that relationship uh, between, you know, the trade show and the exhibitors for that given trade show. Uh, depending on the solution that you're converting, uh, you may not have a unique identifier, you know, like that those, for those, that relationship. And so you may have to create something or use some kind of calculation to come up with that, uh, what we refer to as like a primary key in your main table and then that foreign key uh, that's in the related data table. And so that's what we're gonna look at here. And so let's go ahead and review where we were. Uh, so let me go ahead and get our the solution that we had left last time. And so we have this uh, nice little uh, file that we have. You know, we, we created a couple tabs uh, where we got some information. We took the spreadsheet information. We added a container field that allowed us to insert a picture. Um, and then this exhibitor tab is what we're worrying about today. Uh, now, if I go ahead and get into the Manage Database area, just as a quick review, uh, again, the trade show became you know, the sheet in the Excel spreadsheet, uh, became a table, and then all of the different columns uh, became the fields uh, that we're looking at in uh, our database. And we switch over here to the Relationships tab, uh, you'll see that there's just a single table. Okay, and that's what we want to go ahead and take a look at and expand on here today. Uh, so to do that, uh, we're not able to use the same tool uh, that we had used last time uh, because we don't want to create a new file. We want to include something in an existing file. And so that's where uh, FileMaker still gives us a tool to do that, and is that it to go into File, and we can do an import. So we're going to go ahead and select the file. Um, pull up here, we're looking at our trade shows table. Uh, go ahead and select that and open it. Uh, now just like last time, uh, you'll see that we have the option to import the trade shows, the exhibitors, or the named range uh, there for event ID. Uh, obviously since we've taken care of the trade shows, we want to go ahead and look at the exhibitors this time around. Uh, so we go ahead and select that, and it brings us into this uh, import uh, dialog box. And there's a couple of things that we have. Our, it's telling us what our source is, which is the you know, exhibitors uh, sheet in that Excel file. Um, and then our target uh, right now is our current table. Now, obviously, we don't want to put exhibitors into the trade shows because that wouldn't make any sense. So we need to make a change there. So we click on that drop down, And what you'll see is, is that we, have, we can pick a different table, or we can also create a new table. And that is exactly what we want to do. Uh, now, when I do that, you'll notice that the target fields now become just a random F1 through whatever number of columns that I have in my source. And we could leave it that way. We could go back and relabel them you know, later, uh, but that's a lot of work. Uh, so FileMaker has made it very easy for us. Um, that over here on the right-hand side, we're able to go in and say that that first row in our spreadsheet 
Um, that's not data. We want to use those as our field names because those are our columns. So we can go ahead and select that and you'll notice that now our target fields are going to inherit uh, those same names. So everything looks good there. If you want to preview the data, you can use you know, the arrows up here to go you know, back and forth if that's something that you feel like you need to do. Uh, but from there, we just go ahead and select import. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we get a summary of you know, what happened. Everything was successful, which is always very good. So we can go ahead and click OK. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look and see what happened under the hood. So I'm going to go back into my you know, file manage database. And you'll see now on that relationships tab, now we have uh, two entries, but there's some extra symbols and stuff there. Um, so what happened there? Well, if we switch back over to the tables tab, you'll see that what FileMaker has done for us, it knew that we were in, you know, importing uh, from an Excel file, creating a new table um, that was called exhibitor. So it included all of that as the name, which is a little bit more than what we need. And quite honestly, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night if I leave it like that. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, take all that extra stuff off because we know it's going to be exhibitors, change the name, and now that's what it's called. Um, and there's our exhibitors, and there's where you know, we have all those same columns that we had on our spreadsheet are now in our FileMaker table along with the data. Uh, one of the things you'll notice that you know, FileMaker tries to do some uh, look at the data that's being imported and make some decisions on what kind of field it should be. Uh, now here, because you know, the zip code was looked like a number, that's what it said it was. Uh, now, however, because you may be dealing with you know, Canadian zip codes, which of course include letters, leaving it as a number is probably not the best thing when you're dealing with a zip code. So we can go ahead and easily make that change here uh, from our uh, list of fields. And you know, so now I think we are ready to proceed. And what FileMaker has done now on the like the form view data entry side is it has gone ahead and created a layout that it's just simply called exhibitors and put all of those fields on there for us. Now there's a few things here obviously that we can add to help improve the usability of this layout uh, as far as organizing things, which we'll get to in just a minute. But what I want to talk about uh, and what we did not uh, touched on last time was this idea of using a value list to help us with our data entry because you'll notice that the relationship is built on an ID number and that is something that you know shouldn't change and you obviously want to make sure you have the right ID number so that the correct exhibitor is now linked to the correct trade show. Um, so what can we do uh, to help improve that? Well if we switch back over here to the spreadsheet for just a second uh, you'll notice that you know in this you know if I were to click into the ID number field we get the little down arrow and I have this named range where I can pick you know one of the ID numbers from one of the trade shows that was defined on that other sheet okay well of course you know FileMaker allows us to do the exact same thing so under here under file manage uh, we can also de define our value list which is what we're going to be working with here uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new value list, which is trade shows. I can type here this morning. All right. And what we want to do is there's three options for where this information comes from. And since we already have the trade shows defined in what we imported previously from that trade show sheet, um, I'm just going to go ahead and select the values from a field, tell it to use the trade shows table. Um, and of course I want to include the ID number and then it's going to be helpful because sometimes the ID number is not going to be something everybody's going to remember. We also want to know what name is associated with it um, and because the, the name is something that's going to jump out a little bit more at people, we can actually go ahead and sort um, by that second field uh, when we're viewing our list. That can be very, very helpful. So I click OK, click OK. Now we're back um, and now we need to make an edit to this layout. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drop into a layout mode, select the ID number field over here on my inspector palette. I'm going to move over to the fourth tab for the, some of the specific database uh, information. And you'll see that the control style is defined as an edit box. We're going to go ahead and make that a drop down list now. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it to use values from the trade shows uh, value list that I just created. And we're going to have it include the arrow 
uh, just so that it's a little bit obvious that the uh, user is going to have that list to select from instead of having to try to remember um, that ID number. So now when I go back into browse mode after I save it, uh, you'll see that I can click on the arrow and now I have that list of the trade shows. Um, so I've got the number but you can tell that the list is obviously sorted now you know, by name making it a little bit easier to zero in on you know, which trade show I want to select. Okay, so that's one type of value list. Uh, another value list that we're able to use is one that includes static values and a place where you may want to use that is we have one here for the sponsorship level. Um, and obviously there's four different types of sponsorships um, and so we want to make sure that as data is entered that we don't have you know a misspelled word or a sponsorship level that doesn't exist and that's another area where these value lists can be very handy uh, in the data entry process because you're you know controlling that data integrity so if we go back into our you know manage value lists uh, go ahead and we want to go and create another new one and this time we're actually going to use custom values because we don't need to pull them from a field because there's only four of them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and call this the sponsorship levels. Okay. And they are platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. <clears throat> Again, come back here, drop into layout mode. Uh, we can select that field once again. Again, change the edit style or the control style from the edit box to the drop down list. Select that new one that we uh, just added. Um, and then again, have it show the arrow. So now when I you know, save my layout and go back into browse mode, now when I select the list, I have you know, my four choices. So I've you know, done a few things to this point uh, to help with the you know the data entry process of getting these exhibitors entered in. All right, so now we are going uh, through the wonders of technology. We're going to hop through a wormhole here and uh, look at a layout that has been uh, updated. And here's uh, what a potential data entry layout may look like after you move things around, get them a little bit more and better organized. And so. We're definitely well on our way of converting the spreadsheet into something that we can use in a relational database. All right, so that's just the exhibitors. So now, if we go back here to our trade show form, you know, again, we've got the information, the picture. Now we want to start doing something on this exhibitors tab. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and include a layout object called a portal, uh, which is one of the you know. You know, common you know things that you know FileMaker gives us and allows us to use, and a uh, portal is pretty much like what it sounds. I think we're all familiar with you to hear about portals on a ship, uh, where you're in your stateroom or your cabin. You look through the portal and you're able to see, you know, more information around you. You know, whether it's more you know the sea or more of the coastline as you're sailing past. Um, so it's the same thing with a portal. We're talking about this related data where we've got the trade show, we want to get information about the exhibitors. So the uh, portal allows us to then look at this additional information from um, our trade show and see and then get it onto this layout. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that tool. I'm just going to you know, draw the box here and, and drop it on my layout. And the first thing it does is ask me to show where I want or ask where I want to show the records from. Okay. Uh, and this is one of the things that you know FileMaker uh, is all about the context of where you're at. Uh, as the realtor would say, it's all about location, location, location. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind uh, and know where you're starting from and what information you're trying to get to. So as I select on it, it says that my current table is the trade shows, which of course it is, um, but I don't have anything that's actually related. I've got information in there, but th there's no connections made, so we need to do that. Now, without having to jump out of this and get into our managed database, you know, FileMaker you know, says, well, you may have forgotten to do that, so I'll give you the tool right here. So we're going to go ahead and click on Manage Database. We're on our Relationships tab. And we already had talked about the ID number before is what we're going to use to be able to link these couple things. Uh, so FileMaker makes it very easy where we can just kind of drag and drop to connect 
you know, the ID number in the trade show to the ID number in the exhibitor. Um, if you need to do anything special with that relationship, you can double click on you know, the little connector symbol there um, and make some additional edits. But this is what that relationship looks like. But to create it, it's as easy as it's just you know, dragging and clicking. All right, so we've established our relationship. Uh, now when I come back here to the portal setup, I select show records from. Now exhibitors is shown as a related table. So I can go ahead and definitely want to select that. Uh, skip a couple of the, uh, options there at the top, but I, I'm one of those guys that I like to see my scroll bar all the time. So I'm going to turn that on, and then I'm just going to leave these formatting options on as their default. Click OK, uh, but I'm not quite done yet. So what now I'm given is the chance to insert fields into that portal. All right. Uh, so because we're on the trade show uh, information, I don't really need to see the ID number and the name because I already have that from the trade show. So I can skip those. But in my portal, it's going to be helpful probably to see the sponsorship level, the booth that was assigned, the company name. Probably not the address, but it would be you know maybe helpful to see the city and state if I need to know where a particular exhibitor is coming from at a quick glance just to know if they're traveling you know a, a long distance or if they're from you know the next town over that kind of thing. So go ahead and select those fields. Now we go ahead and select OK. And what FileMaker does is it gets however many fields you're going to be using, and it just goes ahead and drops them in. It does some auto spacing and then aligning and widths. Um, and so now we have all of this information on our layout. So I can go ahead and now save it. And if I go into browse mode to take a look at what that looks like, there are my exhibitors. As I you know, scroll down through, I can see some information, but it's just kind of all in there in whatever order it was imported. Uh, so one of the things that FileMaker allows us to do, I will drop back into layout mode, is that we're actually able to assign a sort order for our portal, portal to make sure that we're seeing the information in the way that we want to see it. Uh, so let's go ahead and specify some sort options. Uh, probably, you know, like I said, you know, typically you know, we may want to sort by sponsorship level because uh, you know, people they are paying the money for the sponsorship so you want to make sure that you know, they get all their, their perks and things so we'll go ahead and keep them up towards the top so you know who those are. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and sort by company name after we sort by sponsorship level because again I'll sleep better at night if it's done that way. Alright, so we go ahead and click OK, click OK again, save the layout, go back into browse mode, look over here and okay things are sorted but it's not really the way that I expected. It put everything down here at the bottom uh, for the sponsorship levels. Um, and again it's just the way that FileMaker sorting works. Uh, so if I drop back into layout mode, we come in here, look at the sort orders. Uh, you'll notice that you know, we have the options for ascending, descending, or we can also sort based on a value list. And that's what we want to do in this case. So again, we would select our sponsorship level uh, value list that we've already created. Just go ahead and click OK. Again, save, go back into browse mode. And now when I look at the exhibitors, all of the sponsorships are now sorted up to the top and they're in the order that I would expect to see them, which is you know, platinum, gold, you know, silver, and bronze. Right. Another thing that you're able to do is that if you've forgotten a field or added a field after the fact, um, you don't have to know everything that's going to be going into the portal when you initially create it. We are able to you know, make you know, changes you know, once the, the portal was initially defined. So you know, maybe we've run into a situation where you know, having this phone number is going to be a very helpful thing. So we want to make uh, a few adjustments here and go ahead and add that phone number onto our layout. And uh, I'm lazy. Uh, so typically what I do when I'm working in a portal is I'm just going to go ahead and grab something that's already there. I'm going to just duplicate it with my shortcut key here. And then I'm going to go down, select the phone number, click OK. And now I can go ahead and just make sure that it's properly positioned, give it a little bit more width, click Save. And now when I go into Browse Mode, again, you'll see that that phone number has been added. All right. So you know, again, things are looking good. 
Uh, there's probably a little bit of formatting that we may want to do, uh, which again, through the wonders of technology, we're going to jump ahead in time, uh, thanks to our flux capacitor. And now we have a layout that looks like this. You know, it's set up to where, you know, as I widen my layout, things are stretching and moving in a way that I would expect it to. It just looks visually appealing. I've also left a little bit of room because maybe I want to add a button here that I can click at a future time to go in and view the details for this particular exhibitor. Or maybe I need to add a button over here to maybe remove them uh, from the list because they had to cancel for some reason. So there's some more things that we can do with this layout. Uh, but one last thing that I want to do today is I just want to add one more calculation field because the one thing that may be helpful is to know how many exhibitors do we have coming to a given, a given event. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back into our Manage Database. Again, we're starting from you know, the trade shows and we just want to get an exhibitor count. So we're going to go ahead and create a field here. Count and we, you know, talked about the different field types. Uh, one of the things that we are able to do is create a calculation. So we want to define this new field as a calculation. Go ahead and so click Create. And now it drops me into the you know, Specify Calculation dialog here. And I know that I want to use this particular function. And it starts to fill in so I can just you know, quickly select it. Gives me a couple clues as to what that information should be. And this is another place where we want to make sure we're dealing with the correct context because we're looking from the trade show, but we're not counting anything on the trade show. We want to count what's in our related table. So we're going to go ahead and select exhibitors, um, and count is going to count you know, fields that have a non empty value. And so the easiest one to use here is that ID number that is already linking our exhibitor back to the trade show that they're exhibiting in. We want to make sure the calculation result is a number. So I can click OK. Click OK again. Um, and it's already gone ahead and added that field uh, to my layout. So I just go ahead and switch to layout mode because I want to go ahead and just clean this up just a little bit. So I can go ahead and drop it in over here. Save it, go back into browse mode, and there we have, oh, forgot one more thing. Because of the sliding and stuff, we need to make sure that it doesn't get covered up. So I can go back into my inspector palette here, and then just go ahead and for my auto sizing and anchors, just want to make sure that it's anchored in that lower right corner, uh, so that now when I save it and go back into my browse mode, uh, you'll see that it stays down here in this bottom corner where I would expect it to stay. Uh, so that's the next step of taking our Excel spreadsheet and getting it into a relational database. And you know, so now all the information that we had in Excel is now in FileMaker and it's there and ready for us to start using. So I think that is all the time that we have for me. So I guess I can go ahead and turn it over to uh, Bobby here and we All right, thank you, Todd. That was a very good demonstration on uh, not only how to import data into FileMaker, but what to do with it afterwards. Uh, we did get quite a few questions. Hopefully we have time to go through them all. Uh, so this first one's actually in regards to the importing of data into the database. And they were wondering if you can import into an existing table. Um, obviously, you went through how to import into and create a new table, but um, can you do it with an existing table? Sorry about that, a little bit of technical difficulties. So, uh, Yeah, so uh, you can definitely import into an existing table. 
Um, obviously, if the names of your columns in the source match up with FileMaker's table or field names, it's much easier. Um, but in that dialog, you have the ability to you know adjust the import order to make sure that you know the phone numbers go into the phone number fields and dates go into the date fields and things like that. All right, perfect. Um, another question on importing. Um, so obviously you did Excel sheets, but um, can you import other types of data files like CSVs and, and other things? Uh, yes, uh, FileMaker has a wide range of you know uh, you know sources that it can you know use. Um, it can use uh, comma separated, you know, custom separated values. Uh, you can import from you know another FileMaker file if you have a local copy and you want to you know merge it with something else. You're able to. So there's a, a lot of different options there of you know how you can import. Uh, you can even have you know import from a, a text file that doesn't have you know column headers, as long as you know how the data is and what you know where the breaks are in the data to get them into the right fields and things. All right, perfect. Um... So here's a question, when, and this is in regards to uh, the layout, being in layout mode and editing, editing the layout. So um, when you expanded the layout for the exhibitors, how did you make it um, so that the stretch, um, so that the extra space was on the company name? Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me, we'll switch back over here and uh, go back into our... So you can actually see, uh, and what that is is that drop into layout mode. And you see here's our, our finished product, and again on this first tab of our um, in, uh, layout inspector, uh, you'll notice that it defaults to you know top and left, which you would expect. Uh, but the way that you're able to stretch the company name is that you're able to have it anchor on both the left and the right. And then what you do is you then take like you know city anything that's to the left or to the right of you know, what you want to have stretch is that you would then change it to be anchored to the top and the right instead of on the left. Uh, and now another little uh, I don't know if it's a trick but something that I do that helps me is that so that the labels behave the same way is that regardless of the width of the label I just try to make it the same width as my uh, field that is below it. And then I make sure that the same, you know, anchoring is applied, and so that way the you know the label name also moves with, you know, the column that uh, is you know maybe moving or stretching or, or whatever the case might be. So that's that's how you handle um, that uh, that stretching part uh, when you're you know make, working on your layouts. All right, cool. I think we have one final question. So would you use that same import process if you're imp doing like an import of a big upload of contacts into an existing database? Um, I mean, you certainly could. I mean, and that's probably how I would handle it. I mean, obviously you would have to go through all the steps of creating the table. Um, but it, again, it all goes back to just making sure that you're lining up your, you know, company name to company name and address and, and all of that. Uh, so that you know, all the data lands in the right spot. All right, perfect. I do believe that is all the time we have. Um... Forgot the mic again, sorry guys. So I do wanna thank uh, our presenter, Todd, for doing the presentation. I want to thank for all of you viewers out there who've watched um, and have continued to watch. Special thank you to the people who've commented and asked questions. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, then please click subscribe. Also, at the bottom of the page, you will find a survey. If you could please fill that out. Um, it helps us out a lot. Um, if you have any ideas for new topics, they could be submitted to nutshell at crossit.com. And we are glad to have served you at Lunch and Learn.